Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Big problems. That's what's people being held inside the newly opened Wayne County Criminal Justice Center say they are facing right now every single day. The biggest accusation is that inmates are living in very poor conditions. Several former inmates and family members say it is a nightmare inside. From computer system outages leading to missed court dates and error messages like this on the county's website, family members feel like they're being left in the dark. Our Sean Lay joins us live now with answers after taking these rising frustrations to the people in charge. Sean. Let's talk about this. The building behind me, brand new at Wayne County Jail. We know, Kimberly and Devin, there was a cyber attack on Wayne County Computer Systems October 2nd. The Wayne County Executive's Office just got back to us about a half hour ago saying all their systems are up and running. So what's going on inside this jail? Is it a computer problem or a staffing problem? Here's what we're finding. The entire purpose of the new Wayne County Criminal Justice System was spelled out by Chief Judge Patricia Frazard. We want people to know that we are here to serve. Uh, we want to offer the best service to the community, and this supports our endeavor. I mean, this is a state-of-the-art building. The structure, the technology, the safety. But now, big problems. Even locating an inmate in the new Wayne County Jail, either online. You can't find someone. You can't find, you can't find your loved one. Correct. Why? It, it's, it's, uh, the system is just wasn't well planned at all. Or in person, attorney Brian Brown, like many other lawyers, can't see their clients in the jail. I've had issues myself, you know, trying to find clients. What do you mean, find, find your clients in this building right behind you? Yes, the, the, the deputies have, found, have issues finding clients for court. We know there was a cyber attack on Wayne County computer systems weeks ago. Its impact still being felt by people inside the jail who can't get a court date, who can't get out like 22 year old Royale Chapman. Have they lost you at all? Like lost track of you or other inmates? Yeah, they, yeah, they lost track of us. They told my mama, where are they here? And I, I believe that they're understaffed. You're absolutely right. They should have an uh, individual manually go through the system and find exactly where each individual is if you are having these technical problems. And we're hearing that the staffing is probably the root cause of all this, understaffing. It's one of the issues, absolutely. All right, back here live. First thing this morning and yesterday, we asked Sheriff Raphael Washington to interview with us. There's a lawsuit, guys, we touched on yesterday uh, from uh, inmates inside this jail about these very issues. So Sheriff Washington told us that he cannot interview about it because of the lawsuit. However, he says his team's been working around the clock to resolve many of these issues. So we go to County Executive's office, Warren Evans. They tell us late today that all computer systems are up and running, but, quote, we defer to the Wayne County Sheriff's Office on whether inmates are getting to their hearings as this is specific to the sheriff's operations, guys. So at six, there's a guy in here who was released on our, supposed to be released October 6th for, and released into a mental health facility We're with his attorney at six o'clock because he's still in there and she wants to know what is going on. We continue to look for those answers at six. Back to you. Okay, we'll see you then, Sean. We appreciate it. All right, we're turning now to breaking news. Within the last few minutes, we have learned former Taylor Mayor Rick Sollers will spend the next six years in prison. Sollers was sentenced today on bribery charges. Between 2016 and 2018, Sollers used his influence as mayor to give a real estate developer the majority of the tax foreclosed properties. It turns out Sollers was promised free home renovations and other items once the company had control of the properties. Sollers is one of three people indicted by a federal grand jury in this case. We are still uh, working to learn more about it. We'll have an update coming up here on Local 4 News at 6. Well, if you've taken a drive around pretty much any community lately, odds are you've noticed at least one advertisement for a marijuana dispensary. Hard to miss. We know it's legal to use in Michigan, and it is a huge industry, of course. The state says September recreational sales in Wayne County alone top $29 million. That's just Wayne County. However, the Detroit City Council is considering restricting where advertisements can be placed. Victor Williams has been following this story today, and Victor, uh, the supporters of doing this say it's all about the children. Yeah, that's right, Devin. All about the children. Some of the leaders right here at City Hall, they don't want them going down the wrong path, so they're hoping that they're not overexposed to these billboards showing that marijuana. Everywhere you go, there are 
weed slash cannabis billboards. Chances are you've seen these marijuana billboards all over the city. Some are fans, others not so much. They ought to shut down the weed stuff. City Councilwoman Angela Whitfield Calloway is now hoping to change that by introducing a new ordinance that will keep the billboards out of areas close to children. In certain service areas like a public library, like a school, a church, a playground, a play field, um, we cannot have these billboards anywhere near them within that 1,000 feet. They shouldn't have to see that. They don't even know what that's about. The motivation behind it came when the councilwoman heard from a young man worried about the effects the advertisements would have on his friends. We had a kid here back in May who was crying. He was talking about how many there are and how he's, you know, concerned about his friends, um, seeing them every day, possibly starting to use at an early age. But these are only the beginning steps in the process that will take some time to go into effect. It's on the agenda today just for it to go to public health and safety as a referral. It'll be discussed in the committee, then hopefully we'll have a public uh, public hearing set. Hopefully in the next 30, 45 days, I'm praying before recess in December. Well, if they want to introduce restrictions on advertisement, they have to look at it across the board. Now, there is already an ordinance in place that prohibits alcohol and tobacco from being shown on those billboards very close to children. This is more so going to be just an amendment to that ordinance. Victor Williams. Local you're watching, interesting, watching this uh, move forward. All right, Victor. Well, we are now exactly two weeks from Election Day. As Vice President Harris works to shore up support in blue states, she prepares to head straight into the solidly red state of Texas. Meanwhile, former President Trump hopes to gain greater inroads with Latino voters. Bree Jackson is tracking the latest from Washington. Hello, Devin, Kimberly. In this new report, Senate Democrats urge Americans to vote early and have confidence in the electoral process, while also stressing that this is a close race and it's likely the outcome of the election will not be known on November 5th. Millions of Americans across the country eagerly casting their ballots as more states begin early voting. Everyone is talking about this election. This is the biggest election in about eight years. Former President Obama campaigning in Wisconsin to help kick off early voting there as the Harris Walls campaign unleashes its top surrogates during this final stretch. Harris seeking to reach more voters on her own by taking part in more media interviews, including with NBC News. Former President Trump doing outreach across voting blocks, holding multiple events with faith leaders and Latino voters. I don't know, but I don't know, but it's going to be close. Trump is also attempting to raise doubts about this year's election while admitting he's seen no evidence of fraud. Have either of you seen any cheating, incidents of cheating that leads you to believe that this election will not be fair? Well, I haven't. Election officials and law enforcement releasing this ad warning of consequences for election interference. What will not be tolerated is acts of violence or intimidation. Celebrities are raising alarms about deep fakes designed to mislead Americans. This voter expressed confidence that their voice will be heard. I feel like my, my vote is safe. With voting underway in a tight race, officials stress there are systems in place to ensure every vote is counted. And U.S. intelligence agencies warn that Russia is continuing its efforts to undermine our elections, which includes circulating false stories, some aimed at inciting violence. Federal leaders are reminding people to be aware of election information and to stay vigilant. In Washington, Bree Jackson, Local 4. Okay, Bree, thank you. And tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris will sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with NBC White House correspondent Hallie Jackson. You can watch that conversation on NBC Nightly News at 6.30, following Local 4 News at 6. Meanwhile, more than a million Michigan voters have already cast their ballots in the general election. Secretary of State's office says just more than 5,000 voters have taken advantage of early in-person voting, uh, including a record-breaking 2,500 voters in Detroit this first weekend. That's almost 10 times more early voters than the primary saw. So far, about half of absentee ballots requested have already been returned. Long way to go, of course. Mm -hmm. but. 
Let's turn our attention to the weather. Not quite as warm as yesterday, but still a really balmy, lovely yeah. day. There's a live look at the beach, by the way, from the west side of the state. That's Grand Haven. A lot of states seeing temperatures well above normal. Maybe not quite warm enough to jump into Lake Michigan. Oh, it's no, almost never no, no, warm enough no, to jump into no. Lake Michigan. <laughs> Let's get over to Brick Hollow, though. He's in for Kim Adams. Uh, is fall ever going to return here, Brett? It will. It will. Uh, but for those of us that love summer like temperatures today, tomorrow, you'll your kind of days with these numbers uh, still most of us are in the 70s across the state at the moment even on the other side of the big lake 71 right now uh, out in parts of Wisconsin but you'll notice way to the north and west those big blues 50 degrees right now uh, in Bismarck that's behind a cold front that's going to swing through and it's going to be the first of a series of cold fronts over the next week that will get us back to where we should be this time of the year it's also going to help bring us some rain chances now, the first comes tonight, uh, later on this evening. This front not really going to do much temperature wise for us, but it could give us a few showers as we head past sunset tonight. Uh, most of us, though, I think are going to be dry this evening, but we'll keep the chance for a couple of light showers in the forecast for this evening. But a better rain chance as we head towards the weekend. We'll talk about when in just a bit.